Okay, Matt, for college, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at some new content here. Uh, these are things you've seen before, but uh, just a little delve back into geometry. Um, we're going to look at the uh, uh, Pythagorean theorem today and the distance formula and the midpoint formula. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem says that if you are given a right triangle with legs of length A and B and hypotenuse of length C, again, this is the hypotenuse. And then these two are the legs. So the hypotenuse is the longest side, and it's across from the 90-degree angle. We know that in that situation that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So if you square the legs and add them together, you get the hypotenuse squared. So it says use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the following. We would like to find this length c. And so we write 5 squared plus 10 squared is equal to c squared. So 25 plus 100 is equal to c squared. Or 125 is equal to c squared. We should be able to express both of them in simplest radical form as well as as a decimal. So when you square root both sides, you get square root of 125 is c. Square root of 125 can be simplified. It is the square root of 25 times the square root of 5, which is 5 roots of 5. So 5 roots of 5 is simplest radical form. You can also take out your calculator and type in 5 roots of 5, or what you could do is take the square root of 125, and in that case you get 11.18. So we have simplest radical form, and we also have decimal. So uh, you should be able to do both. And the next one, we're going to call this uh, one of the legs. We'll call it A. So we have A squared plus 6 squared is equal to 13 squared. A squared plus 36 is equal to 169. We subtract 36. We get A squared is equal to 133. There is no perfect square that divides evenly into 133. So A is the root of 133. And when you take your calculator, you find that square root of 133. And we get 11.53. So approximately 11.53. The square root of 133 is exact, whereas 11.53 is an estimate. And we have a squared, or 13 squared, plus b squared is equal to 15 squared. 169 is 13 squared, plus b squared is equal to 15 squared, which is 225. Take 225 minus 169. You can see we have 56. There is a perfect square that goes into 56. It would be 4. If you take 56 and divide it by 4, you get 14. So square root of 4 times square root of 14, or 2 roots of 14. I'm going to write that as a decimal. 2 roots of 14. That way we have, we have it expressed as simplest radical form as well as a decimal. Use that approximate sign because decimal is an approximation. 7.48. All right. Let's try applying this. An 18-foot ladder is leaning against a building. So I have a building here. I'll put a couple windows up there. Put a door down below. So that's my ladder, 18 feet. The bottom of the ladder is 6 feet away from the base. So we're wondering the height, we'll call it B. It's wondering how far up the wall does the ladder reach, so we're looking for B. 6 squared plus B squared is equal to 18 squared. 36 plus B squared is equal to 18 squared is, I believe, 324.
subtract 36, get 288. So B is equal to the square root of 288. Now, I know that the people who are probably wondering how high it reaches up the wall, they don't, they don't want an answer in radical form. As this is a word problem. They're going to want the answer in, uh, as a decimal. So if you simply take the square root of 288, that will give us the decimal, 16.97 feet. So almost 17 feet. That's how high it goes up the wall. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at both the midpoint formula as well as the distance formula. We're going to look at uh, two coordinates. And we're going to find the distance between them. If this coordinate is x1, y1, and this coordinate is x2, y2, then we can find the horizontal distance right here by taking x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And we can find this vertical distance here by doing y sub 2 minus y sub 1. And so if you notice, I can make a triangle out of it. We'll call that the distance. So the distance squared is equal to x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. That's the distance formula. It's just like the Pythagorean theorem. Notice how it's like c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. When we write the distance formula, traditionally we take square root of both sides. So your distance formula you could write as the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. And there you have it. The midpoint formula is simply the middle of the values. So it's x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2. That's the x coordinate. The y coordinate is y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2. So we have our x and our y values. So we're going to determine the distance and the midpoint of the following points. And I'm actually going to do this using the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to count. I'm going to make a, <clears throat> I'm going to make a triangle out of it. So it looks like I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 4 squared plus 6 squared is equal to uh, C squared. Or 16 plus 36 is equal to C squared. 52 is C squared. If I square root both sides, C is equal to the root of 52. Uh, 4 divides into that, square root of 4, times square root of 13. So C is 2 roots of 13. We'll come up with a decimal. Seven point two two. Now that's the distance. For the midpoint, you're going to find the middle. So you can look at it graphically and and tell that this looks like it's the middle, which is zero one. Now, what if you didn't have the picture? What if you had this situation? Well, then you use your formula. Distance is equal to the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 so this is my x and y this is my x and y so x1 y1 x2 y2 so the distance is Take x sub 2, which is negative 1, minus x sub 1, which is 3. 
And we take y sub 2, which is negative 3, minus y sub 1, which is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Squared is 16. Negative 3 minus negative 2. I'm going to add the opposite. And I get negative 1 squared is 1. So distance is the square root of 17. is 4.12. If you do the midpoint, you have x sub 1 plus x sub 2. I'll give myself some space here. Midpoint, x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2, and y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2. X sub 1 is 3. X sub 2 is negative 1. Y sub 1 is negative 2. Y sub 2 is negative 3. 3 plus negative 1 is 2. Divide by 2 is 1. And negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. Divide by 2 is negative 2.5. So that's my midpoint. So we're showing you both the graphical approach as well as using your formulas. Let's look at the next one. Look at number six here. We're going to make a triangle. You can tell it's three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by eight. So looking for the distance. It's equal to three squared plus eight squared. So nine plus sixty-four. So distance squared is equal to 73. So this is equal to square root of 73. And the square root of 73 is 8.54. Find the midpoint. Um, you know, it might be a little bit tougher to look at this one. If you think about it, you're going to have to go, if it's 8, you're going to have to go uh, 4 up. 1, 2, 3, 4. And if it's, uh, if it's 3, you're going to have to go over 1 and a half. So that's my midpoint right there, which is over a half and up 1. Let's try to use the formulas. Distance equal to square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. So x sub 2, let's see, we'll label x, y, x, y, 1, 1, 2, 2. So x sub 2 is 4. x sub 1 is 2. Y sub 2 is 4. Y sub 1 is negative 7. So 4 minus 2 is 2. Squared is 4. 4 minus negative 7 is 11. Squared is 121. 125, we've done that before. That's 5 roots of 5. Remember from the front, we said the square of 125 was 11.18. And for the midpoint, we add the x values. So 4 plus 2 divided by 2, and we add the y values. So 4 plus negative 7 divided by 2. So 4 plus 2 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. And 4 plus negative 7 is negative 3 over 2 or negative 1.5. So my distance and my, my midpoint is my distance is my midpoint. And there you have it. Okay. Uh, so uh, later on, we'll move on to graphing functions by transformations. But right now, uh, you can start focusing on that very first worksheet, which is regarding the Pythagorean theorem. Hope you do great. We'll see you soon in a Google Meet.